everyone, my name is Paloma Chumacero and the paper that I chose for my paper critique is called Formal and Informal Institutions and the Economic Development in Latin America. So the purpose of this paper is to present and discuss the impact of social, economic, of social capital and institutions on economic development of countries in Latin America. The, hypo the hypothesis that the authors came up with is that there is going to be a positive relationship between social capital and institutions with the growth and development of the region. So for those of you who don't know what social capital is, um, the authors def use Putman's definition, which says that it's features of allocation such as association environment, civic engagement, and trust. The structure that the paper follows is that first they state the abstract, which explains what the paper is going to talk about. Then the introduction comes, which ties with the literature review. Uh, a lot of the literature review is talked about during the introduction, so that's why those two kind of go together. Then they go into the methodological approach, then databases, then variables, and at the end, the final comments. So in the introduction, the authors state this question, which says, is there consensus on the role of institutions and social capital on economic activity? So that's like the main question that they want to answer. And they explain all the different like studies and research that has been done on this topic. And finally, they conclude that social capital can have two effects, which can be positive effects or negative effects. So some of the positive effects is that it promotes cooperation among agents and it reduces opportunism. But as it promotes cooperation, cooperation, this might not always be good for a country because it may be that just a small group is cooperating, which leads to the negative effects, which say that it creates ties and interpersonal trust among a few ones which leads to exclusion of outsiders and also excess of regulatory standards, which create institutional rigidities, which in the future may lead to not accepting deals or just proposals that may be economical, economic beneficial. So those can be the negative effects of social capital. They also, uh, I think this was really interesting, they explained the study that was done by Putman. This study just was based on Italy. They divided Italy like into northern and southern and they confirmed that they confirmed the positive effects of civic community on economic activity. So basically northern Italy was doing better because of good institutional performance and efficiency that was derived from this civic community, meaning that the community was engaged and they were participating and interested in politics and making change and just advocating for better living conditions. In the methodological approach, the authors acknowledge that there exists a high degree of complexity in measuring development, social, capital and institution. So they decide that the best way to go with this is by to solve this question is by using proxy data, using different methods of qualitative and quantitative comparative research. However, they also state that it may present potential difficulties about endogeneity of variables. So again, the methodological approach was kind of vague, in my opinion. And here are the databases and the variables that they used. For example, um, the World Values Survey that they used, that survey actually got uh, information from 95 countries in the world, so that one was pretty big. Although, although they, the authors do not make use of like an econometric, uh, an econometric uh, function, or they don't use regressions or something like that, they are mo more based on theory. So as you can see, these are the different sources that they used, and each source 
is connected with a concept that they studied. So for example, the America's Barometer, they focus on civic engagement, which is kind of what I was talking about with the Italy study that was done. And here are the results. Um, I feel like this paper goes really fast into the results without really analyzing the data or even presenting the data in a detailed way. So for the, for the results, the authors just state that these concepts can all influence the institutional quality. So concept, the concept of property rights, rule of law, law and order, contract enforcement, public voice, executive constraints, political stability, respect to political rights, respect to civil liber liberties, and intra-group mobility can all influence institutional quality, but like we stated before, it can either influence in a positive way or in a negative way, which also is not very consistent or does not provide a really reliable answer to the question. So in the final comments part of the paper, the, the authors state that there must be a correlation analysis done. Uh, they say that this is necessary to further explain the topic to provide better results. So they state that a correlation analysis is necessary to analyze the degree of relationship established between variables but if this is done, it would also not indicate a cause and effect explanation. So again, it would not be very helpful either because the co conducting a correlation analysis would only establish the relationship between variables. It would not explain why that variable leads to that outcome. And then I thought this was also interesting. They quoted this um quote by Schwarzman, which says there is a strong correlationship between these indicators and the income level of the countries, leaving doubt whether it is wealth that enables better governance conditions, or conversely, whether it is governance that creates the conditions for social equity and wealth. So again, in here it's opening the idea that it might be the wealth of a nation which influences the correlationship between these indicators so again the, there's another variable that might have also influenced so i think this um this paper overall overall is kind of biased um i do think it was well organized like i said on the on one of the slides there it's well organized and it's easy to follow and read. It contains all of the components, although the sections are not very well developed. So I wish that um, they had gone more into detail and showed more of the mathematical approach, not just the theoretical part. Um, they, I think with the literature review, they did a very good job like synthesizing and summarizing the, the studies and the research that has been done with this topic. Uh, the questions are not fully answered in my opinion. They do not have like a specific question that they want to answer. They just say that they want to explore the theme or like provide more detail. So definitely there's not that specific question that needs to be answered. Um, the methodology, like I said, is pretty vague in my opinion and it's not fully explained. I think the theory connects to the data just in some parts. The one that I noticed the most is the one of the study that was done in regards to Italy, which involved civic engagement, uh, which is, uh, they say that they stated that it was a factor of social capital in that civic engagement, so definitely it connected to that study that was presented in the theoretical part of the paper. Um, it was 
also not very convincing at the end. I feel like at the beginning of the paper, it was providing a lot of information that was reliable and easy to understand and follow. But then as the paper moved um, along, I feel like it was becoming less and less explanatory and just kind of like just throwing a lot of information but not really explaining it. So I think there was maybe extra information in the paper and just they could have kept less information but explain it in more detail. And yeah, that was my... Uh, view on the paper and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you